So it's the second day of Pride Game Jam, and I'm absolutely excited and honored to have Sally Loikinen here talking about her game dev experience in her company, I assume. Yeah. Especially since I have worked with Sally before and studied with her, so I'm a long time <laughs> supporter of her cause and company. <laughs> All right, I will not... Um, occupy the space anymore. This yeah. is for you now. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I clap in the mic. Well, I have my own mic. All here. right. Sorry. All right. Then I'm done. All right. Hi. Um, as Celia said, I'm Sally Loikkanen, and I'm here to talk to you about queer stories in video games, and especially uh, games released by my indie games company. So, Lizard Hazard Games is a very small indie company based in Kouvola, Finland. And um, it's basically just me, officially. But I have a lot of people working with me on different projects as like freelancers and so on. And we have released three commercial games so far. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about them and about the queer characters and stories. Uh, but to start with just a little note about the word queer, I know that not ev everyone likes to use the word, but because it has been used as an insult in the past, but um, I feel like I personally like to use the word because it's such a good umbrella term for any LGBT plus uh, people. And I like to use it about myself. So uh, apologies if the word offends you, but I will use it in this presentation. So first of all, uh, my company's first game, um, Your Royal Gayness which started as a school project while I was studying in Xamk, uh, which is an um, applied university school in the um, Kovola and other parts of uh, eastern Finland. But I, I did study in Kovola, so that's why I, I started my company there as well. So Your Royal Gayness is a humorous game where you play as a gay prince, but it's in a fairy tale world where being gay is not accepted, at least yet. So you take on the role of Prince Amir, uh, who has to rule the kingdom while his parents are away on a trip. So the parents are the king and the queen of, of the imaginary fairy tale nation Al Marahish. And um, yeah, Amir has lots of struggles while they are away, both related to running a kingdom and also his sexuality. Uh, when the game starts, um, Amir is still in the closet because the world is not so accepting of queer people. So it's a humorous game. So um, Amir, oh, there's a dog. <laughs> Sorry, there's a dog on the stage. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so Amir has to, uh, so there are these princesses who want to mar marry the prince because, of course, they want to be the queen someday. But since Amir is gay, but can't really just say like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't marry you because I'm gay. Um, so he comes up with some excuses so he doesn't have to get married. So you basically just come up with these really weird and funny excuses so you don't have to get married. Um, And um, so Amir isn't alone, which was really important to us when uh, making the game, that he isn't alone with his struggles. But he has three advisors who know that he's gay and who support him. 
Um, this is one of them, Barry the court wizard, who is totally not a lizard, um, just normal, normal human wizard. So the game is a visual novel type of game, but it does have some gameplay elements to it. As you can see uh, on the screen, there are some uh, resources and a meter. And um, yeah, so the game is really lighthearted and funny since it's like a humorous game, but there are also some a bit darker themes related to like homophobia and so on. Let me check my notes real quick. So um, the queer experience is told through the story, of course, uh, with, with Amir talking about his sexuality and his struggles with his advisors and so on. But it's also conveyed through the game mechanics. Uh, so the mirror you see on the screen is the suspicion mirror, which sort of portrays how suspicious people are of Amir being gay. And um, this has been sort of a controversial feature in the game because, yeah, it's kind of like horrible that you have to stay closeted and, and sort of act uh, as if you were straight. But the, um, the real reason we, why we included this feature is because we wanted to point out these absurdities that are still in the society in many countries uh, where, where some, in some situations you just have to be in the closet and being found out can be dangerous. So that's something we wanted to sort of highlight with the mirror. So the game sort of simulates the experience of being closeted, wanting to come out, but, but the time is not right for that and, and so on. Um, so if, if the player chooses uh, dialogue options where that could be sort of interpreted as, as not masculine enough or, um, or too gay, uh, then the suspicion meter, meter will rise and if it fills up there will be some challenges. Uh, the game doesn't end immediately uh, but it it does pose some challenges if, if the meter fills up. Uh, so the game is a resource management game. Uh, so you have different resources uh, that you can gather while in this um, management phase of the game. So you can send your um, uh, advisors on different missions where they can, can help you gather resources or, or do other things. For example, the spy master can spy on princes or princesses to find out, uh, for example, what kind of things the princesses like and what kind of things they don't like. So it's easier to uh, make excuses to send them away. So for example, if a princess really like spiders, you probably don't want to say that your castle is overrun by spiders. But if they hate cleaning, you, you can say something like, yeah, it's super messy in here and I have to clean all the time, whatever. They are just like super silly ex excuses. Uh, but you can also spy on princes and see if you could find a prince to date. The dating part is not like the core of the game, but you can get a boyfriend and uh, there are different events related to that as well. So your Royal Gaines is on Steam and just wanted to show you that um, I'm really happy and proud that 
it's part of the queer games bundle with super cool games like Tacoma and uh, uh, what else is there? Gun Home, yeah, all sorts of cool games. Uh, yeah, read only memories and and so on. So yeah, I, if you're interested in queer games, you might want to check out the bundle and see if, if you're interested in any of the games. They are all super cool indie games with um, queer themes. Mm, let's see. Uh, actually, let's not go there yet. Um, I just want to say a few words about some of the characters before we move on. Um, and actually, at this point, let's let's take a look at the trailer for the game. It's been a while since I've seen it myself, even so, we we can experience it together. There was a handsome young prince. His parents left him in charge of the kingdom of Al Maharaj. But even with his trusted yeah, advisors at advisors. his side, he was lonely. So they promised to help him find a beautiful prince. Part of the trailer, that's something I actually forgot to mention before, is that part, part of the management phase of the game is where you can set different laws and they are laws that affect the different uh, resources. So for example, you can uh, put money into education or whatever and then people will be happier overall. But there is also one special, um, very special sort of um, law tree or, or like a progression of uh, laws where you can um, make laws that have to do with e equality. So laws where, where for example, it's the Ba um, laws banning like discrimination based on uh, sexuality or or ethnicity or whatever, uh, and like at the last last one of those laws, it's uh, sort of difficult to get to that point, but you can legalize gay marriage in the game. So at the end of the game, it is possible for for the main character to come out. Um, there are also different endings based on you, how you play. Um, dip, uh, for example, w whether you were like an evil ruler or a good ruler, and based on the choices you made in the game. Because the ga there are a lot of choices in the game, it sort of consists of these mini story arcs where you have to make decisions uh, that have to do with running the kingdom. So for example, there is one choice where Amir decides to let his hair grow out. So at the end, you, you'll get a super cool um, picture of him with like flowing hair and stuff. So there's a lot of like really fun, small details like that. Um, let's see. Uh, at least one more thing I want to talk about uh, with this game is the letters that the player can receive so for and also send. So for example, when the player passes a law, let's say something that has to do with equality, uh, the player usually gets these letters from the people of the kingdom 
usually some that are like uh, for the change and some that are against. So it really feels like you are making differences in your kingdom. For example, if you legalize gay marriage, there will be some letters that are like really angry, like, and some that are really grateful. For example, one where there's this old uh, gay couple who have been like together for years and years and years, but they haven't been able to show it because it's been illegal to to be gay. So when you legalize gay marriage, they're like super happy that they can finally get married after years or even de decades. So basically, uh, it's a game about um, just experiencing the life as a closeted gay person, but also there is just a lot of content that ha just has to do with the fairy tale aspect of the world. And, and, and so while the uh, sexuality of the main character is, of course, at the center uh, and at an important part of the game, there is also just, just some random events and just like problems that in the kingdom that have nothing to do with him being gay because, well, none of our lives are usually um, all about being gay, even, even if that's a part of you. So, yeah, just wanted to sort of create this humorous but still kind of insightful uh, game about, about one type of queer experience. Um, one one more thing, um, the Amir is not the only queer character in the story. So the spy master, who you can see on the right there, is uh, non-binary. So they are. Um, so the player basically just doesn't get to know their gender, and they don't really want to identify as anything, they are really like gender fluid and non-binary. Uh, and in the game, Amir, there's one sort of event or storyline where Amir uh, finds out something about the spy master's past and actually finds out their old dead name. And that, of course, isn't really nice for the spy master, so the game also sort of uh, deals with that issue where where the spy master explains to Amir that that's not really an okay thing to do. And uh, yeah, so there are different kind of queer experiences in the game as well. Yeah, uh, let's move on to the next one. And this is Love Bug, um, a game where you go to a game jam and you get to date uh, game developers. So very, very <laughs> relevant to this event as well. Uh, and as Julia mentioned in the beginning, uh, we worked together and we actually worked together on this game where Julia was the lead, uh, project lead. Uh, but since I have a, have a company, we decided to publish, publish the game um, through that. So it's sort of a dating sim parody game um, where you are sort of abducted by this mentor character who takes you to a game jam and you are an aspiring game designer. And all of the characters have don't they don't have like real names, they have their role and then a Japanese honorific. For example, there is producer-san, there is um, designer-kun, and so on. Uh, of course, part, part of it is just uh, to parody sort of the origin of dating sims, uh, because of course they come from Japan originally. And uh, I just want to note, um, I have a lot of love for, 
for dating sims in general. So even though this is sort of a parody game, I, I still have like a lot of love for the genre and it's, it wasn't our intention to like uh, mock the genre, but more like playfully uh, sort of make our own, own version of that. Um, and it's a really silly and short game, um, but it does have some cool um, sort of aspects that are related to like LGBT plus people. Because for example, the player character doesn't have a defined gender. So the player can sort of decide in their own mind, like what what gender they think the main character is, if, if any, any gender. Uh, and for example, on the screen you see uh, animator who's actually, well, you don't see it here, but she's actually the only character who's animated, which is super funny in my opinion, even if I say so myself. And um, when it comes to queer themes uh, or, or queer characters, we have producer son who is non-binary. And at this point, let's take a look at the trailer for this game. The quality is kind of bad, but I guess you can see well enough what's happening. So here's Mentor, who introduces you to the game jam. And here you can see one of the um, love interests and another one of them. Yeah, so there you can see the animator who's the only animated character. Yeah, in the game you also fight bugs, literally, while you make your jam game. serious ending yeah so yeah as you can see that was released in 2018 um, yeah just a few more words about the bug battle system that's not really it doesn't have much to do with like queer themes but it I find find it really fun. Let's see if I have a, I don't, I don't know if I have, no, I don't have a screenshot of that, but, um, but basically it's sort of a Pokemon style battle where you literally um, fight bugs. So that's the way how you work on your jam game. And um, it takes time to work on the game. So you sort of have to decide between like mingling with the other um, jammers and and working on your game and all of the sort of battles have different solutions they are sort of like mini puzzles uh, for example you have to uh, combine different uh, game dev um, sort of areas of expertise or, or like for example code and art and so on so you um, combine those and then you get to 
attack the bug. And when, when you defeat the bug, you yay, congrats, you're like one step closer to finishing your gem game. And yeah, here's the map of the sort of gem area. Sort of feels very similar to what we have here right now. So, so if you like game jams, I I recommend this game. Of course, it, I made it, so I guess I'm biased. But if you're interested, it's only like I don't know, like four euros or something on Steam. So. Pick it up if you're interested. And um, the latest game that I released actually just a few weeks ago is called Lovingly Evil, uh, the big bad dating sim. And sort of as the game, uh, name of the game suggests, it's a um, game where you get to go to a event that's like a for a conference for villains and you get to meet the other villains you get to make your own villain character and you can even possibly date the other that is so this is how the game looks this is another sort of visual novel type of game but it does have more gameplay than that but at the beginning of the game, you are greeted by this really adorable skeleton. So you go to a conference and you get to create your character. And yeah, there, there's our character creation. So you have a lot of options to create your character. Uh, so we have different body types. Uh, face shapes, skin colors, everything, and also different outfits and accessories and pets, and there's, there's a lot of stuff. But I think what's relevant to this talk is that none of the clothing options are uh, restricted by the body type you pick. So there are some body types that are more masculine and more or more feminine, but for example, you can put a dress on the masculine body and that's fine, like no problem there. So I think that was one of the important things for us uh, when we were making this game, that you are not restricted by, by your sort of appearance when you are choosing your outfit. Let's see, yeah, so uh, I don't have a picture of that screen here, but you do get to choose your own pronouns and you do get to choose your own background as a villain. For example, you can be like an evil overlord or, an, um, sorry, or like an evil demigod or, or whatever you want, there's, there's a lot of options and you get to so, sort of choose your background, like maybe your village was raided by orcs when you were young and, and you were the only survivor and that's why you're evil now and so on. So there, there's a lot of sort of background stuff. You can customize your character a lot. But yeah, um, here on the screen you see our sort of best boy of the game, Satan. So yeah, you, you can date Satan in, in this game, uh, which I find very, very nice. <laughs> uh, so Satan is a really sort of surprisingly nice person. Of course, like his job is to torture people in hell and so on, but that's, that's just his job. Like, you know, we all gotta do our jobs. It doesn't mean that you're, like, mean to everybody. Um, yeah, so just like in Lovebug, your sort of 
gender identity, well, in Lovebug, you don't really have one. You sort of imagine it in your head. But he, even here in this game, um, no matter what pronouns you choose or what kind of body type you have, you can date all of the characters. So all of the characters have potential to be queer. Um, and for Satan, even though he um, doesn't really have many sort of queer themes in his route directly, I find that his sort of the theme of his route is something that a lot of gay people or queer people can relate to because he has trouble with his family, so that's God and angels and all the folks in heaven, so he was kicked out of heaven and, and that's something that a lot of queer people can unfortunately relate with being kicked out of their home by their parents. So um, one of, some of the choices that the player can make in his route are have to do with like, uh, do you want to stick with your sort of biological family or if you want to make your own family, like a found family. And that's also something a lot of queer people sort of relate, can relate to, like that your even if your own like blood-related family doesn't accept you, you can find a family from your friends and so on. Uh, the next uh, love interest that we have in the game is the cute anime robot. Um, her name is Nova and she was built by uh, Dr. Leon E. Everscum, who is the mad scientist. Uh, and sort of the twist of the character is that even though um, Leon created Nova to be his assistant and his wife, actually, and He's really into anime and stuff, so he created her to be sort of his ideal partner, the ideal woman. Um, but uh, as time went on, Nova started to, since she is uh, like a real working AI, a true AI, so she is capable of learning. So she started learning about the world and realized that sort of her original programming wasn't really that great and she downloaded stuff from the internet like patches and so on and she developed her own personality. Uh, and Nova is actually one of the most intelligent characters in the game. Um, she has basically all the information in the internet uh, she loves reading Wikipedia and so on. Uh, and she likes to do research uh, and the player can help her with that as well. And uh, some of the queer themes that we do have in this route are related to gender identity because Nova was created to be sort of the ideal woman, but uh, she actually doesn't really identify with any gender uh, because she is a robot. She uses she, her pronouns because that's like the easiest for her. And since she needs to sort of hide her identity from uh, Dr. E. Evers, Leon E. Everscum, um, so she sort of dresses feminine, looks feminine, uses she, her pronouns, but um, she, she doesn't really identify with any genders. And this is something that's sort of one of the core things in her route. Uh, and of course, it's about sort of the expectations that there are when it comes to gender and so on. And also um, sort of uh, Dr. Leon is sort of this 
incel type of character who who thinks that uh, women are something that can, can be owned and and used. So this is sort of something where Nova breaks away from that. And she does have a happy ending. Uh, spoilers. But you gotta find, play it to find out uh, what exactly happens. Uh, so the next character is the evil stepmom, uh, Imperium Massard. And uh, she doesn't have a lot of queer themes related to her route, but there are some themes that queer people can relate to, again, because there is lots of stuff about her family, because she, of course, has a stepdaughter. Well, how would she be a step stepmom without one? So she sort of married this king when uh, when she was young, and the king already had a daughter from a previous marriage. Uh, and then the king died, and she got stuck with the child. And ever since, they have been sort of at odds with each other. Um, then we have Felix von Gloomheart, who is the sort of classic vampire character in the game. Uh, just a sec. I just want to check the time. Can somebody tell me the time? Actually, I don't want to. Okay. Good. So, yeah. So, Felix is the classical vampire, but he is sort of explicitly queer. Uh, he has an ex-boyfriend called Arthur, and the route deals with a lot with, like, he was in a relationship for a long time, but they grew apart. Uh, Arthur wanted to uh, sort of give money to charities and he didn't want to drink human blood, he only wanted to drink animal blood, um, and so on. So Felix was like, uh, no, that this is not going to work. Because all of these characters in the game are actually villains. Uh, Felix hunts people, he's a vampire. Um, there are no redemption arcs. Um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so he, he, he wasn't really happy when his boyfriend wanted to become like a good, good person. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff. He talks a lot about his ex, ex-boyfriend and so on. Uh, yeah, just wanted to say one more thing about this game. It does have a lot of gameplay elements. So each uh, love interest has a minigame associated with them. Uh, this is the stepmom's minigame, which is sort of this card game that represents like a debate. Uh, and other, other minigames are, um, yes. for example, Nova has a quiz since she, she is really interested in all sorts of topics, so she asks you a lot of questions, uh, especially about like folklore and villains and so on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, uh, and for example, Satan has a mini game where you grill stuff on Hellfire, he has a grill um, and so on. So yeah, if, if you're interested, you can also find this game on Steam. Let's see. All right, and then I have a little bit of a general thing. Let me just check. All right, we don't have the time to watch the trailer for Lovingly Evil, but you can check it out. It's on YouTube. Uh, so I want to just say a few words about sort of stories that are about queerness and stories that have 
queer characters because there is a differentiation and this is something that you should keep in mind when you are creating uh, queer stories. Uh, so in stories that are about queerness, uh, the LGBT plus issues are at the center of the plot. So for example, in Your Royal Gayness, uh, Amir's sexuality is like a really integral part of the plot. And um, I have a couple more example games there mentioned. Um, for example, in Coming Out on Top, uh, it's a um, visual novel uh, for adults, but it's about this young man coming out from the closet. He tells his friends he's gay and he starts looking for love. And in that game also, it's very, very integral part of the plot, like the gay identity and, and the gay experience. And Magical Boy, which is actually a webcomic, which is about a uh, um, person who was supposed to become a magical girl, but they are trans, so he becomes a magical boy instead. And uh, stories that are about queerness often uh, depict um, LGBT plus struggles, such as dealing with homophobia or transphobia or whatever. It doesn't have to be about the hardships, but often these stories are. Uh, and stories that have queer characters, but aren't inherently about queerness are stories where the characters just happen to be LGBT plus and then the story is completely about something else. For example, the Mass Effect series, you can date like characters of the same gender, for example, and that's fine. Nobody usually really says like, oh, that's gay, don't, don't do that. Or Overwatch, where some of the characters are gay, but it doesn't affect the story or the gameplay much at all. Uh, there's usually less focus on the LGBT issues and more focus on, for example, a fantasy story or whatever uh, the game is about or like action or other kinds of game mechanics and story content. And uh, one more factor in these stories is that discrimination based on gender identity or sexuality may not exist at all in the setting. So it might be a fantasy setting where it's like completely fine to be queer. Uh, and then some stories fit both categories. For example, lovingly evil, it really depends on like which route you play. If you play like as the stepmom's mom's route there, it really isn't about the queer experience. But if you play uh, Felix's route or uh, Nova the AI's route, uh, those are very uh, closely linked to the queer experience. And I just want to say that this isn't about like one story is better or the story type is better than the other. I think both of these stories are necessary because we don't want all stories to be just like about queer suffering, that would be really uncomfortable. But we don't also want to sort of just ignore the problems that we do have. So I think both, both kind of stories are really necessary for, for queer storytelling. Uh, just one more uh, game that I wanted to mention is uh, uh, Our War Everlasting, which is a jam game I made five years ago, um, which is about these two soldiers who get wound wounded in, in a war and they sort of find comfort in each other. And uh, this game was made for the uh, jam for gay marriage when gay marriage was legalized in in United States. So uh, you can find our war everlasting in each.io if you are interested.
Uh, and what does the future hold for me and Queer Stories and my company? Well, first of all, I'm going to take a well-deserved break because uh, I, I ended up having to crunch a lot with my <laughs> latest game release. It's unfortunate, but now I'm just going to take it easy. Go, maybe go to these kind of fun events and uh, work on just my personal art projects, freelance work, probably some comics because I'm also interested in comics. So, and those will of course be queer as well. Um, I, I'm not interested in making stories that are not queer. <laughs> um, and I want to make games with more game mechanics like uh, action or tactics, etc. I added a couple of games here that I really like and that I would like to take inspiration from in the future. Uh, there is my all time, one of my all time favorite games, Invisible Ink, which is sort of this um, uh, tactical espionage uh, uh, roguelike game that's sort of like XCOM style and Bastion, which is a more action based indie game. So yeah, I, I, I really want to do something different next, not just dating sims, even though I really like them as well, but something different would be nice. And yeah, everything will be queer always. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's it. I think we're out of time now. So I want to thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions, you can probably ask them in the chat or Discord or whatever, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs>